Are you going? I think that was your invitation. You have all been invited today. Invited to wake up, to come in, to be alive. Invited to be inspired. As I met with a few of the seniors from this church, the high school seniors anyway, who are graduating to plan this service and said, what kind of themes do you want to explore? What feelings do you want people to leave this place with? The stories that they told were stories of inspiration, of taking risks, of finding joy, of travel, of service, of play. And so this morning, three of our high school graduates will share with you their reflections inspired by the theme of invitation to inspiration. First, Nina Cahill. Good morning, everyone. (laughs) Um, So this past Thursday, I was here in Fountain Street Church um, graduating from high school with my class. My friends and I had come to the graduation rehearsal early in the morning, so I took a moment to go up into the balcony alone and just look down. And then I went up into the choir loft. I don't know if I was supposed to, but... (laughs) And then I went to the third floor, and I just looked into Matthew's office, and I looked into the shrine room, and I looked at the room that used to hold that famous yellow submarine. Then I went to the fourth floor, and I looked at the room that we painted, and I looked at the one with the couches that are perfect for taking naps on, And then later, when I was sitting in the graduation ceremony, and I was supposed to be listening to our rather dry commencement speaker, I was looking up, and I was thinking of how old my memories are of this podium, of those candles, chandeliers, of the windows, of the paintings are. They must have always been in my consciousness. I must have been the smallest unit of consciousness, the tiniest baby, when I first saw these things and wondered exactly what it all meant. I experienced the first feelings of awe that I can remember in this church. I remember gazing deeply into a midnight blue window just right out there and trying to see what was beyond the cloudiness. I remember talking softly in the echo chamber when I was too little to even know what echoes were. And I felt fear and I felt amazement and I feel that together those feelings truly make religious awe. And however much people may believe that liberal religion tries to take something mysterious and make it logical and acceptable and intelligent and beyond everything enigmatic, Fountain Street Church has always, always taught me to feel that awe. And I have been taught always by every person here who strove to help raise me up from my tiny little unit of consciousness to some constructed architecture of thought to embrace enigma and not to fear it. And that is what Fountain Street Church is all about. We welcome people with open arms, loving hearts, welcoming hands. Everything that can be discovered is a mystery and everyone that can be met is a mystery. Fountain Street Church has taught me never to fear that mystery, never to out of fear define that mystery, never to classify and discard it, but instead to welcome it, to welcome it with open arms, to learn its rhyme and its reason, and then to take that rhyme and reason and with it to welcome a new mystery and always to be awed. Although when I was little, I could feel religious awe simply by staring into a window, by hearing the Oz head speak and breathe steam, or by climbing through a submarine, that feeling becomes harder and harder to obtain as you grow older. For instance, for whom is Christmas still as it used to be when they were little? When I was little, I believed, and I mean I truly believed, that at midnight on Christmas, animals could talk. I would try to talk to my neighbor's cat. I really would. And when will that ever be as it used to be? But with Fountain Club at my side, I really have felt those maybe naive but beautiful feelings again. I remember under the brilliant myriad stars on South Manitou Island with Fountain Club, shivering in my sleeping bag and clutching the sand because it felt like I might fall into the sky. And I remembered the legends of the great Manitou and I truly believed them, I did. And I remember under the stars in the dark on the last night of our mission trip to New Orleans, waltzing with my best friend in the street while Louis Armstrong played and how we had run across a bridge that night to explore, and we found a chain made of bells and ceramics, and it carried a note saying it was meant for whoever wanted it. And I truly believed, and I truly believed that it was meant for me. And I remember on our mission trip to Flagstaff, Arizona, getting up in the morning to run, an hour before it was even light out, and then watching the sun come up over the mountain and just wash over me, and how it felt like being baptized every morning. 
and how in Zion the shadows of the mountains looked like stealthy giants walking over the earth, and how I think they might have been, and how I would not only never have been to these places, but I would never have truly noticed these places if Fountain Street Church had not raised me. I have friends and family members who I truly respect who can't stand religion at all. They think that only subservient people buy into it. And yet they all, we all, subscribe to something that I would call religion, whether it's poetry or music or philosophy or literature. It's a way of seeing the beauty in the world, not becoming subservient to it, but attempting, trying to become equal to it. It isn't about political implications for me, but rather the implications of the soul, about opening your soul to the possibilities of deeper feelings, of greater peace, of a larger understanding. Not about transcendence, but rather transformation. Instead of rising above the problems and the simple mundane aspects of my life, I've gotten to change them. I've gotten to change my life countless times through vespers, through opening up however slightly to whatever new person, through that new person opening up to me, through hearing a new point of view. And yes, of course, through the big occasions, through reading the Christmas story out loud here when I was just 10, through screaming and running away from the Oz head, through going to New Orleans and South Manitou and Arizona. And all of this I've ascribed to Fountain Street Church, but that sounds so abstract. It sounds like a building, and a church is not a building. It was not this building, truly, that I was awed by, just as it wasn't a building who constructed me as a person. It was my dad who took me to the echo room and told me to whisper anything that I wanted. It was my mom who took me to choir and helped me practice that Christmas reading over and over again until I knew every word by heart. It was my neighbor, Carolyn, who always gave me the best books, was always there to support me. It was Matthew. Matthew, who opened me up to everything I was skeptical about and then some, who made me really stop and think about everything I arrogantly took for granted, whether or not he meant to. It was Patty and Todd, Tony and Shelley, Ryan and Amber, who guided us through every week of Fountain Club and on trips, but who more importantly gave me adults to admire and to aspire to be. It was the best friends that I have made out of strangers over the years here, and the memories we will always share together. It was being little with Lily and hiking with Julia, and the train and the hostel in Arizona with Lee and Padgel and Zoe and everyone else. It was everyone who ever bought a wreath or a diversity stake for Fountain Club. It's everyone who listened to me sing off-key in junior choir, <laughs> and it's everyone who's listening to me now. It's these people who raised me, and it's these people who I'm awed by, and who I've been honored to welcome, and to question, and to try to figure out. And more importantly, it's every kid who's staring up at the paintings and the chandeliers and not listening to a word that I'm saying, and wondering just what it's all about. I don't have a written out speech, and I'm not going, probably not going to use as many, you know, big words and fancy things like she said. <laughs> I could talk about the enigmatic majesty of all the things that I've been taught by this church, but that's the thing. The reason I don't have it written out is because my memories of everything that happened here, they're memories. They were never written out. Everything from things that aren't here anymore, like the old submarine that I love to go to every single week to the next year when I really didn't want to go to church at all, but my parents made me every single week. <laughs> and, the, and every Halloween coming in to see the great Oz mask, which it's gone now from what I've heard, or it's maybe in storage or something. <laughs> but what I do want to talk about is how everyone here since I've been little has made it so great, so much better than I could have ever imagined. Even though there are probably still kids here who hate coming here every week and their parents have to drag them kicking and screaming. And they love that one week when their parents say, well, we don't have to go this week. But I definitely changed at about fifth grade when I actually wanted to come. I wanted to see the people that I only ever saw at church. And I remember when Matthew was, they first told me that he, we were gonna have a new children, a new youth minister coming. The first thing I thought was, cool, I get to meet a new person. And then they told me that it was a gay minister and I was like, cool, our church can do that and no one else does. <laughs> and. It's honestly been great having this, what some call a spiritual experience, 
coming here. And I know that some people don't like our church, that some people don't like things we do, don't like that we would have a gay minister, that we would have pamphlets for a service that can help women who are other, uh, women who could not afford to have an abortion otherwise. And that I love that we do all of these things, even though other people might think that it's a horrible thing to do. I think it's great. Because when we do something like that, we say, we'll help you. We don't care what you're trying to do. We will help you. As long as it's something that as long as it's something that will actually help you, we'll do it. If it's anything from going to New Orleans to do some cleaning up to going to Arizona and working in an animal shelter to help them spread mulch to doing uh, to going around picking up garbage just downtown in East Town, we would do anything to help people. And that is what I really love about this church. Thank you.